Welcome to Hoke Orchard. I'm Harry Hoke, co-owner of this orchard with my wife Jackie. I'm Jackie Hoke from Hoke Orchard. My husband Harry and I have a small diversified fruit farm here in the southeastern part of the state of Minnesota. We have about a 95 acre farm here, um, all on a ridge top. We've got about 60 acres of land that is not in steep hillside and woodlands. And we have a very diversified perennial fruit operation. One thing that we've done on this farm over the years is, is try lots of different apple varieties, both conventional and disease resistant. And with having all of these varieties ripening over a long season, it helps in the marketing and the product placement. So we can always have two or three varieties on the shelf available to the stores. So our orchard is, is just big enough that we can use a distributor and we have enough varieties over a long period of time that we can have our brand on the shelves in the co-ops and the health food stores that carry our local organic apples. It took a long time to develop all this, uh, but we have a pretty, a pretty good amount of apples that go to market. But since we are organic, there's always damage on the apples. Uh, we vary from 80% packable fruit down to 20 or 30 and it can vary within a block and it can vary from block to block and with all this processing fruit uh, a few thousand bushels of it we have to utilize that and we can't just sell this low quality fruit onto the conventional market for processing because we only get a couple dollars a bushel and so we put in a commercial kitchen and an apple juice facility so we can utilize these uh, lower quality apples there's always some apples though that fall on the ground and some that are damaged to the point that they can't be processed and to use those we've decided to add animals into the system so on this farm you'll see lots of different biodiversity, whether it be the insects or the animals or the fruits or the vegetables, the crops that we grow, the natural areas to eat. So if we provide that for them, if I'm a pig, I have a good place to live and I get lots of good fruit to eat. And they provide us an ecological service by helping to decrease the amount of pests and providing fertility to the farm. When you think about it, there is no natural system without animals. So when farmers are trying to produce on a vegetable farm or a tree farm and there's no animals in the system, it's really not a balanced ecology. So what we're trying to do here is figure out rotational systems and use several different species of animals including some ruminants and having them do some of the mowing. They can clean up the apples post harvest. They can do grazing and the pigs will do a little bit of cultivating under the trees in the spring. And we also have several other fruit rather than just apples. So in order to equal out our market presence and the utilization of labor, we're growing some small fruits. So we have strawberries, we've just planted some honey berries, we have a lot of raspberries, grapes, tart cherries, plums, and apricots. So on this farm, we can start harvesting in June and bring in labor and have workers here most of the season, as opposed to trying to find a whole bunch of workers for just a few weeks at the end of the season. Not only do have we developed kind of a balanced ecology, we also have kind of a family or community on the farm. Trying to have a farm or a lifestyle that integrates most closely with nature is what's important to me. Creating an environment where people, plants, animals, insects want to live and good things to eat, that would create, in my mind, a good system. Here on Hoke Orchard, we use a lot of integrated pest management, and we really try to use the state of the art in monitoring the different insect pests. So we time our insecticide sprays uh, to specific blocks and at the time of the uh, when the insects go over threshold. We do this in multiple locations throughout the farm. Our farm is broke down into about 15 different blocks, 15 different individual orchards. We have insects and pollinator plots because we want to increase our beneficial insects on the farm and they need a place to live and something good to eat. So if you look around the farm, you'll always find flowering plants because the insects need something to eat. This is our, our pollinator plot. It's about a half acre in size. I did this all organically, so we didn't use Roundup. We just did some tilling. And there's about 20 different plants seeded in here. And the, the idea is 
that this blooms from the earliest part of the season up until fall. We've been trying several different breeds of pig, and what I found that I really like is a cross between Gloucestershire Old Spot, so this is the also known as the British Orchard Pig. Very good at gleaning fruit. Uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago in Great Britain, they would leave these girls out and they would just gain weight and their, their uh, offspring would gain weight just gleaning apples in the orchards and in the woods. So they do really well eating the fruit. And then the other, then we're crossing these two with a, with a mangalitsa, which is a woolly uh, Hungarian pig. And he's smaller, but they got a thick coat, very winter hardy, also uh, does very well on pasture. So we can put them out on the grass and he can just root and, uh, and keep his health and vigor without needing any, any extra grains. And their offspring are hardy, they grow really well uh, without grain and we, like I said, we just keep them on the orchard. So through the, most of the growing season they're not getting supplemental grain, they're being moved around in the, in the uh, production orchards in the spring and in June up until June, early July with the drop of the early fruit and when we're hand thinning. When those blocks are done we'll usually move the pigs into the apricots and let them clean up. Uh, they just love to eat the apricot pits and the whole apricot. In fact they just crunch through those hard apricot pits like they were peanuts. Uh, we'll move them into the plums and then later on we can move them into the summer apples at, you know, a few weeks after they've been harvested. So we're just in the beginning stages of this, but uh, our goal is to eventually rotate multiple species of animals through all of our fruit plots on the farm and trying to develop a farming system where we can have meat production on the same land as our fruit production and actually produce healthy meat in a system without taking land out of production for human food to feed animals for meat production.